Hey guys, Rob here from Service Scaler. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about planning in the year 2021. And a great tool that you might be able to use for planning in 2021 is Microsoft's tool, Microsoft Planner. It's available as part of Microsoft 365 subscriptions. Not all of them, but most of them. Uh, and what it allows you to do is create a series of tasks, assign them to people, set a due date for them, and, uh, and push those out to uh, both yourself as an individual and your team. Now, if you're a follower of Service Scaler, you will have seen a blog post come up from our recently appointed marketing coordinator, Sky, uh, who jumped in and did a review of Planner. So someone non-technical has come into the application uh, and started playing around with it and created her own plans around our marketing schedule and what we need to do. Uh, if you haven't seen that yet, I'll drop a link down in the comments here below. Okay, so what we're going to do here now is we're going to do a quick run through or an introduction to Microsoft Planner. And hopefully this will give you the confidence to jump in and have a bit of a look at Planner uh, and what you can do with it. Through the January period, while things are a bit quieter and the circuits close down, might be a good opportunity for you to do it. So I'm just going to share my screen through here. And what we can see is that I am already logged into office.com. So if you're a Microsoft 365 or an Office 365 user, you go to office.com, uh, log in with your credentials, and that will take you through to this interface. Now over on the left hand side, we can see right down the bottom that we have all apps. So if we select that, it's gonna show all apps that are available to us. You can see there's quite a few here in the Office 365 portal, particularly for those who are on a higher tier of license like me. Uh, if you do need uh, to know anything about any of those applications and how they work, feel free to reach out to me uh, or anyone at the team at Service Scaler would be more than happy to help you. So we can see in our list of applications here that we have Planner, which is over on the left-hand side on mine, could be anywhere on yours. But all we do is select Planner, and that's gonna take us through to the Microsoft Planner interface. Now we can see here that I don't have anything created yet. Um, so this is to reflect what you are going to see when you log in. So if you're not a current Planner user, um, this is exactly what you will see when you log in. So the first thing that we're going to do here is we're going to create a plan. Now there's a couple of different ways you can do this. If you are already um, using Planner, you will have to go new plan over on the left hand side here. But because we've never created one, what we want to do is create one. Now, if you're not a Planner user, I implore you, go in and do this. You can't break anything. You might get a notification or two that you haven't done a task yet, but you certainly can't break anything. So we're going to go create a plan. Now there's a couple of things that we can do here. We can give the plan a name. I'm just gonna call ours test, just for the sake of this video. Um, now we can add that to an existing Microsoft 365 group, but I think just as an introductory thing, we'll just have a look at the couple of privacy options here. So we have public and private. Uh, basically, if you set it at public, anyone in your organization will be able to see the plan. So it will come up in their list and everything will be visible. If it's private, only members you add. So it's by add permission. You add them into the group and that will allow them as a member and that will allow them to see the plan. What I'm going to do for this one is I'm going to make it private so I can show you adding members into that group. And all we need to do is create plan. That'll do its little process there for a second, creating our plan. And we're done. So <clears throat> what we can see now is uh, this is our plan. This is the interface. And all we need to do is put in tasks. So this one I'm gonna do for uh, based around marketing. So for our marketing, we know we need to write blogs. We know we need to do videos. We know we need to do lots of things that our practice management system isn't going to drive our behavior. So it's not going to say, hey, Rob, you have to have this done by this time. Um, you, uh, hey, Rob, here's a thing that you need to create or here's something that you need to collaborate on or here's a contribution that you need to make to part of our business that doesn't exist within our practice management system. That's where you use this. That's where it's a powerful tool. So for this one, I'm gonna say create video. I'm gonna set the due date as today when I'm doing it and I'm going to assign it to myself. Just hit add task and that's it. That task is created. If I wanted to create a second task and delegate it to somebody else, I could assign the due date as being Friday and I can assign somebody else to this. So if we have a look here, we'll see that uh, Tristan, my colleague, has come up as a non-member. Now, that's because I haven't, this is a private plan and I haven't added any members in yet. So we can still add Tristan from here and what it's gonna give us a prompt for is to add the user to the plan. So we can say, assign and add, that's fine. We're okay with that. 
and then we just go add task. Very simple. Now, if we wanted to add other members to this plan so that we didn't have to go through that process or so that they could see it, we simply go up to the right hand side here to members and we start typing in somebody's name. Now, because this is a fresh tenant, I don't know how many users we have in here. Oh, we have Steve. So we'll drop Steve in. He can be a member on this plan as well. And now Steve will be able to see the plans and the tasks that are in it. Now, he doesn't have anything assigned to him, so he's not going to have anything come up in his to-do list, which can be seen over here on the left-hand side. If you go to My Tasks, it will show you the tasks that are assigned to you. If we shoot back over to our Planner Hub, we'll be able to see our test plan here. Now, there's some other functions that we have that are uh, worthwhile looking at. The first one that I like is Schedule. So we can see in the tabs across the top here, is schedule, I can see the things that are upcoming uh, in context of this plan specifically, uh, things that are upcoming. So we can see create video, we can see upload video, all of the bits and pieces that we need to do around that plan. Now, if this plan was going to be, for example, a marketing plan, so this was gonna be for our marketing team, we might say, okay, well, we have a marketing plan, but there's a few different things uh, or a few, few different groups of tasks that we need to do. So one might be blog writing for stuff for the website and the other might be creating videos. What we can do to start grouping the tasks together is to add a new bucket. So very simple, this one might be video production and we can add a new bucket and this one might be called blog writing. Now it's very, very simple to move tasks around. So video production, all I need to do is drag and drop the tile and that's now into the video production. I can add tasks directly in here. So it might be to write blog posts on planner. The due date might be for, let's say next Friday. And I might assign that to Steve just so that he has something to work on as well. So that's the basics of Planner. Now behind the scenes, some other things are going on. Um, if we go across to uh, all apps, I'm going to have a look at Outlook because we should have received a notification that a plan task has been assigned to us. So if you have a plan manager and someone says, okay, I need Rob to perform this task. Can you please assign him a task to uh, do that job? Once that's done, you'll get the notification come through here. So this is saying I have tasks due today. So it's sort of driving that behavior that, hey, you have things that need to be done. Come to me uh, in terms of planner, get these things done and get them actioned. So there's links in here that will take us through, um, but we can basically just see that through in there. Now there's another really quick tool just before we wrap up on planner uh, that makes it really, really simple to find all of the things that you need to do. Uh, it sort of consolidates everything uh, and it's called to do. So if you go to office.com, and you uh, bring up all apps, you'll be able to see to do as an application. Now it will bring in things from Planner, your tasks that have been assigned there. It will also bring in your to-do list from Outlook. Uh, it'll set uh, or demonstrate or show the things that are due today, the things that are upcoming, uh, and just give you some visibility over all the places around the Microsoft 365 stack where you have tasks or activities assigned to you that need to be done. It will consolidate them all in one place. Super, super simple. Um, it's one of the things that I know that I use every day um, because I have you know, follow-ups in Outlook, I have things in Planner, um, I just have stuff that I need to do. Uh, again, this is a blank Microsoft tenancy, so you won't see anything here, um, but we can see what it's doing now is it's just getting my list ready. Okay, so we can see there that I don't have any tasks because I don't have anything created out of Outlook. But I can see that I have things planned and I have things assigned to me. And I can also look at my day. So it has some suggestions here. I can start planning stuff out. So if you do have things being assigned to you from different locations out of the 365 stack, you should have a look at Microsoft To Do uh, to give you your to-do list. It makes a really, really simple view so that you can see what you need to get done for the day. 
Uh, speaking of things you need to get done for the day, if you do have any questions uh, or you need uh, additional help with licensing around 365 to Access Planner and To Do and some of the other Microsoft 365 applications, make sure you reach out to us before the end of year so that we can book you in to do a session with you in January while you have some downtime. And if we don't catch up with you before then, have a great Christmas and we'll see you next year. Cheers.